says disconnected. So your laptop isn't talking to the machine. You didn't plug the USB, USB cable. cable. Oh, God. Okay. That's why we're here. Teamwork. Teamwork. And, and luckily, her, her the timing of her academy lessons came around real nice. Nugget. Perfect. <laughs> well done. Hey, guys, I'm back. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to another episode of the Laser Source Podcast. Uh, we're doing something new today. So um, we wanted to give the viewer call-in stuff a break because doing it every week, I, th I think you guys are getting like call-in fatigue. So um, I also happen to know that you guys really like when we do our project videos, right? Raise your hand if you miss Friday Live Day. So we are going to try to hybridize those a little bit um so we're doing like a project thursday if you want to call it that i'll think up of a creative name before we post the edit but um we're here uh and we are going to be publishing the audio version of this to the actual podcast it's an experiment we'll see how it goes if you're joining us today live thanks so much for being here boyce what's up man you ready to rock and roll in this mirror i'm ready man i'm on my girlfriend uh, i'm at the bit We've got Kyle here, too, who's uh, currently muting himself so we don't have to listen to his cricket, his new pet cricket. There he is. There you go, guys. Um, I'm, I'm just really curious if Kyle has named his cricket yet. Do you have a name for it, Kyle? Yeah, it's uh, um, Chulub pretty soon. Chulub. Chulub the cricket. I like it. Very good. Chulub. Like, oh, shu like oh, Chulub. He's, ah, he's yeah. about to get smushed. Very funny. Yep, that's a good one. Uh, so yeah, guys, that's, uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, we're here and we're hanging out. Boyce, what is on the docket for today? What are you working on? Well, I bought this mirror nine about a month ago and we ordered some, an air compressor, the California air compressor, uh, for air assist and also a, um, Terra Bloom, I think it's called a Terra Bloom eight inch, uh, exhaust fan, inline exhaust fan. I got to hook up and I don't know nice. what I'm doing. So cool. Well, we're here to help. I started with the Terra Bloom brand before I moved over to AC Infinity, and it lasted me a good three years before I like gummed it up to death. <laughs> um, so you should you should get pretty good use out of that fan. That should be a nice one. Fair enough. So where uh, are you in the process right now? Well, I I um, watched some videos, of course, and specifically, uh, Pate Ranch is here. With laser lounge uh she i she had a video about how she hooked hers up and i kind of went off of hers nice. i had to assemble the uh external what's it called a um the regulator the air yeah. filter regulator and with yeah. a bleeder valve um so i assembled all that together i put it on together and i the new the new mirror nine that i got now is got a little better setup where it's just literally just a, an input yeah that's uh that's what i've seen on the back of mine as well so it should be pretty plug and play now here's the question I got to turn off the other, the internal one, right? I would assume that you would like unplug it. Is it, is it, I haven't looked that closely at the stock air assist. Is it like hardwired into the machine or is it just plugged into like an internal outlet? I have no idea. Let's find out. <laughs> All right. So let's go take off some panels. Yeah. Okay. Let's take off some panels. I'm waiting for Kyle to just get up and, uh, and go smush that cricket. <laughs> is he coming? Is he coming in out the window, Kyle? Is it is it an outdoor cricket? Yeah, is the window open? It's, yeah, it's it's not open, but it's like I think it's like right on like the uh, the ledge. Yeah, on the on the end He's of the just window, right there. I'm wait. I'm waiting for you bugger. to go on a field trip. You're just gonna go around, go around back. I might. I might hit him. Hit. I. You know what? Funny enough, I can't hear it right now. Uh. I mean, okay, we'll, we'll take yeah. it. If it comes through, yeah. let me know and I'll... Uh... Oh, I, I certainly will. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Their voice goes. He's uh he's oh, diving yeah. down now behind the mirror. He's trying. He's trying to do it with his phone and tripod. This is very interesting. So I got my microphone here just in case. In the roll of paper towels. Perfect. That's right. Yeah, paper towels. Cuts down. Um, But yeah, so I'm, gonna, I'm not sure what, how good this angle is, but... Here we got here, we got the outlet, uh, the output, the air out. Yep. 
And I got it going back here. Oops, no, I don't. I took it out. Okay. I know this is probably a terrible video. That's good. It's fine. In fact, I'm going to make it, uh, I'm going to solo you just so everybody can see what you're doing back here. Is looking okay? Yeah, that looks great. Yep. All right. So I'm flying. That's it. Yep. It's just um, the push to set. Yeah. If you can see this in here, here it is coming in, straight yep. line into this two piece valve here. Yep. That's in. And here's the out. I'm not sure what this little valve is for here. It looks like you can, you can cut it off. Yep. Yeah, it's like a bypass. You can actually, yeah, it's a bypass. I believe that you don't even have to do that all the way. I think you can just set the pressure. Like you can actually change output there. Here? Yeah, yep. Just by like tightening it a little instead of like oh, a lot. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Okay, so then the back side. As you can see, it's a pretty tight squeeze. Here. It's yeah. a very tight squeeze, but you're doing it. I'm very impressed. <laughs> I'm skinny. Getting skinny. Okay. Better better get this uh, all this stuff in and done now before Thanksgiving rolls around. You know what I'm <laughs> so let me go up and around. Okay, so I think wait, it's not in this panel. Maybe I do. Honestly, I don't remember. Um, it no, it might be in there. It might be in that panel. That might be the one. I think it's way over here. In this one. Oh, in the back. Yeah, sure, sure. The back left. Oh, I do. One of the things I do like about those panels is that they don't just like door open. They actually come all the way out so you can fully remove them from the, yeah. you know, the unit. Yeah, that's so nice. So setups like that are great, especially if you're, you know, the the quintessential, you know, do it at home business person. Because yeah. who yeah. has a, you know, 1500 square feet of room that they can stick the laser in? and have a solid 10 feet around it to do work on it, right? Yeah. I, You know, the ohm techs do that, too. I didn't know at first, but they, they have little, like, spring pins that you have to, like, pull to, like, get the door off. And uh, I definitely, like, curb stomped mine to get the door off because I did not know about the <laughs> oh. pins. So I, I wrecked it. Yeah, I see it. It's uh, you, You've located it right there, boys. So, uh, yes, that's a good view. I don't know how to unhook it. <laughs> so what do I got to do to turn that off? Feel around in there, man. Uh, you know, see if you can find a, a plug or something. It looks like one of the kind of standard Chinese fish pump ones. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little too dark. We're not quite getting the um, ISO that we need to be able to see. Okay, so this looks like that's the pump here. Here's the air hose coming in. But I don't see how we turn that thing off. Looks like this might be the power. That does look like power. Yeah, absolutely. We're here, but I mean, does that mean unplug it? I mean, yeah. Is it just a Phoenix connector? Is it that simple? Can you just unplug it? I'm not sure. It's like this little latch here. I'm not sure what that so is. The, the Phoenix connectors generally have two little flathead screws that keep the wires pinned down. Oh, no. These like, aren't it, no, no, no. Inside the green things. Like from the top. Yeah, see those little round holes on the top? Typically, you'll find little flathead screws in there that you can just unscrew. Or the whole thing might just pop right out. I mean, it, it may be a, a squeeze and pull. Yeah, I don't know. It looks pretty damn secure. Let me feel the back of this. It's definitely going into this motor. I just don't know, and I don't... I don't want to start unplugging shit and get my ass in the sling with the with the misses here. Um, yeah. I'm seeing if I can hunt that down for you, bud. So I'm not sure. Let me let me go get a flashlight too, real quick, so I can see what the hell I'm doing. This is what we're looking at. So like I said, I think this these two wires this comes out as you can see there. One goes in here, and one goes in there in the very back of those two brackets. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure what we're gonna do with that. That mom with the laser says I should do this with my new baby mirror. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'd love to learn more. <laughs> do it. Um, yeah, I'm not that brave, man, to like unhook wires that I don't know how to put, you know what I mean? Like, oh, Jesus. My girlfriend would destroy me. She's upstairs right now. Actually, just so you know, Emily, my, my me and my girlfriend have been watching your videos, your um your academy videos. Uh we signed up for that. Um yeah, we're ready to go live. Yeah, man, this is just fun stuff. But yeah, we've been watching her videos about just how to get this thing set up properly and how to learn the ins and outs, the science of it, really. She really explains it very well in her little uh, her class. Um, so my girlfriend's actually upstairs right now watching those. Um, and we're going to learn how to do it a little better than what we have. We've been trying some little things without really any information 
just kind of moving forward. You put all this time and money out there. You want to do something. And, and luckily, her, her the timing of her academy lessons came around real nice. Nugget. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Hey, guys, I'm back. For you, I'm on the Just uh, for, for the sake of context, um, I am in Salt Lake City right now. We're still... <laughs> a couple thousand miles away from home so i am like just kind of running around doing uh a bunch of things that aren't this at the moment did i miss any developments no i um yeah. no i'm just nervous to even start unplugging shit on what I'm, or stuff i don't know what i'm doing oh do it dude just start ripping um, things out you can always take, fix it. take a picture take a picture pictures take are a, for babies and then you're just good. do it nike um l3000 says why are you guys trying to remove the internal air pump uh, he's upgrading to a dedicated uh, air compressor so that mm, he the has California air tool. His... It's not just any dedicated air compressor. The yeah. dedicated air compressor, right? Yeah, look at that thing. Beautiful. I'm jelly. <laughs> nice and quiet. <laughs> it uh, it's so that he he gets more control over his uh, engraved pressures and his cup pressures. Mm. So it's not like a super necessary thing if you're just if you want to go ham and not think about it, but yep. if you want to kind of go next level and, or if you're really trying to get super clean cuts, uh, that's, that's kind of how you do it. Cause those internal ones, they're not designed to generate a ton of airflow, a ton of pressure. So, so Emily, as we know, uh, is in Eon laser rep and Emily's saying, just plug it into the port that's already set up for you and, and forget about it. Oh, Emily's saying don't disconnect anything at all. Even better. <laughs> yeah, so I would just go, listen man. to her because she would know uh, out of all of us. So while I'm back here, though, might as well put the inline air duct in there, too. The right uh, side, the, yeah, wait, uh, what, fan. No, you don't want the fan at the laser. You want the fan at the exit point of the room. Okay. If you put it at the laser end, any holes or gaps in your exhaust, it's going to push the air through those holes. But if you mm. put it at the exit point of the room, it's going to suck air through those holes. So you don't want to push the exhaust fumes through the holes, right? You want to suck through the holes and keep that negative pressure. Also, okay. Emily says longest vacation ever. Not not really. The vacation was only a couple days. Most of it's just been driving, which has been a lot with two kids. Uh, but we did finish the light object tour. We went to the light object facility. Was that yesterday, honey? yesterday and it was sick it was so cool i can't wait to show you guys you know alex is tired when he has to confirm what he did yesterday yeah, i don't know i mean i i get that well you know i get that way at home too i just i'm like i don't i do the same Tuesday? way especially after the last week man let me about face everything here sorry guys it's gonna be a little noisy for a second you're gonna have to let me know how that california air tools does i uh i had to bail on my first air compressor purchase well i was watching uh, emily's class and she showed the difference with her uh, sample, what do you call that, the um, test run. And you can do a whole lot more cutting with less uh, power and more speed. And it's just clean. Get cleaner yep. cut. It's got less time to char. Yeah, I mean, that applies to the fiber laser too, right? I mean, if people get, get upset because they want to cut through, you know, 0.4 millimeter aluminum, and then it's covered in burrs and like, you know, jagged edges and stuff. All you have to mm -hmm. do is just do less or less power, more speed, and more pass. You get a nice clean cut. It just takes a little longer. You just gotta be a little more patient. Yeah. Move this bad boy over. Yeah. Alicia Here says my my California air tools only lasted one and a half years. Sorry, Kyle. Uh, I ended up going to a uh, Lowe's Cobalt with a three year warranty. That's interesting. Good to know. I'll have to check those out. I've not uh, I've not seen those before. How is it in terms of of noise? Oh, same desk. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Very nice. Mm. I just found out my mic has this like little button right here. Is it noisy when I push it? No, that's a mute, bro. Oh, dude, that's so nice. You got a physical mute button. Yeah, that's really tight. It doesn't make noise when I like touch the microphone. No. Man, this mic is so so good. It's a Samson Q9N, and it's it's like awesome, dude. I've been I've been pretty happy with my my uh, my quadcast. Yeah. It's um, it's kind of interesting to get used to because you can change up the the pickup pattern of it. But I can't believe Boyce got an perfect. I can't believe Boyce got an eight inch fan. You got me, man. Yeah, it's hardcore, dude. I'm into it. I like I like over engineering crap like this. It's it's what was in the description box. If it's um, if it's 
I, I see exhaust as a safety feature, not just a requirement, but also a safety thing. So overdoing it on an exhaust is never a bad thing. I'm the kind of guy I like to buy shit once. All right, I've deep babied myself for a moment. Look at that. There's the fan. That's a that's a big boy fan for sure. She's pretty. Emily says she's about to upgrade hers too, but it was uh, good for budget and getting started. Yeah, yeah for it, sure. I mean, they're... They've got a pretty wide range, uh, you know, in terms of model variety, and they're all fairly quiet. So they're, you know, they're good for indoors. But it's uh, something that I've never done, man, ever. Yeah, just, I've I mean, always we, we do. Just, uh, we do it. Uh, yeah, we do a ton of stuff here on the channel. But I'm still on the fish tank air compressors for everything all the time. It's, just, it's like mean, crazy to me that we haven't gotten to it yet. But maybe that's something we can cover in the uh, the gantry crash course. Yeah, I, I, it's definitely something I'm interested in doing. Um, I've been looking into doing it for a while. It just, it was actually part of what I wanted to do when I had the, uh, the original air compressor lined up and then it went on back order and just sat there for months. So I just, okay, never mind. Now the fun part, figuring it all out, right? Of course, Boyce is a manual reader. Well, I'm just trying to see what, what the hell the parts are for here. All right, so. True, I've never read a manual. Uh, Miranda chimes in. Alex has never read a manual. Uh, absolutely true statement. <laughs> well, the That's thing fair. is, we have, I had this uh, reducer, but yeah, there's no way to necessarily tighten her up. Bro, here's the uh, here's the answer for you. You ready? Yep. Duct tape. Yeah. My usually uh, those have like a uh, like a clamshell bracket that goes over it. Kyle, it you've been, you that. you've been to the shop, Kyle. You've seen the uh, the the nightmare squid of exhaust ventilation. Hey, I'm gonna switch what? cameras and, and show you something here. That's like ninety percent duct tape. Like I don't even think there's that much vent. Honestly, I don't even know if I even got duct tape in here. Oh wow! Yes, that laser in the mom, Emily. It is. It's the tear bloom that was in your links to your video that I watched. Imagine shopping off somebody else's affiliate links, boys. <laughs> oh, hers is the six inch. My bad. <laughs> Un unbelievable. <laughs> You're fired. Again. Again? <laughs> what do you mean again? <laughs> my uh, my CO two is going off of an eight inch to uh, a reducer on each oh, side. Yeah, I didn't and then I have a wall end off. cap. I totally missed your your little tour there, dude. I'll do it again in a minute. And then the the my fiber table uh, for the fiber or my Galvo table because now I have a UV is running off a six inch. And honestly, I don't notice an air movement difference at all between the two. No, the only uh, reason I have the eight inch on mine is because though. it's pulling out of like those eight different hoses. Cause we have hooked up to like eight lasers. So the, the eight inch is the main fan that gives me the pressure. And then I have boosters at every unit. Uh, boys. Yes. Go get the duct tape. Dude, I don't know if I ain't got any fucking duct tape. I ain't gonna lie. You got duct tape, dude. Just go look in your house. You're you're a homeowner, are you not? Then you own duct tape. <laughs> Just got duct tape it up. Okay. Oh, um, he, he bailed. He like bailed, bailed. Well, we'll see. He's going to get a couple minutes. The um, centrifugal fans. I can mm. literally take the duct off my fiber table, turn the fan on medium, and it will. I can suck it to the ceiling and just watch it walk across the ceiling. It'll yeah. Hold, it'll hold like eight to ten feet of duct, just mid air off of its own suction. Crazy. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. The uh, sometimes that uh, eight inch centrifuge fan that I have at the shop because it's wired up to every single exhaust in the entire shop. Sometimes I forget to turn the booster fans on and it still provides enough draw to like oh, yeah. suck uh, from all of those hoses at the same time. And there's like eight openings, you know? Um, you were there, you saw it. it those those oh, yeah. huge fans are crazy. I think the like if you... If you ever felt a desire to improve airflow, I Centrifuge. think the only thing... You, well, no, because your, your fans are great. The only thing you could maybe make better is like blast gates on all the exits mm, right true but then you oh, have you to remember to shop? open the one you're using you mean at my shop yeah um i mean i the yeah the gates would be great so that you you know focus and localize the suction you're getting the other thing that i could do that would make a huge difference is all the way up until the point that it's like the hose on the desk actually being bent and turned in order to point at the thing I need it to point at. Solid ducting. From what I've heard, you lose a ton. Say hi. Hi. Felix hey, Felix. Uh, from what I've heard that the, the ribbed collapsible ducting, you lose a ton of pressure because of the uh, 
you know, flexible walls. Look at boys found some duct tape. What do I, come on. He's, he's like trying to tell we're, me he doesn't have duct tape. We're like brothers. He has matching duct tape to my duct tape. You have white duct tape? Yeah. yeah. You, you minimized me. So understandably, you didn't see my, my exhaust tour. It's okay. I did. Yeah. Sorry. Miranda, I'll show sent, it again. Me, it's okay. Miranda sent me a, uh, this is such an informal episode. Miranda I sent me a, um, uh, yeah, I see that. A uh, menu for room service, which is something I've never done in my entire life, uh, is room service. But it comes with added value when you have children running around. And it's a $2 it's, delivery, uh, food, which is nice. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's cheaper than DoorDash. It's cheaper than DoorDash. You don't, you don't have to load everybody into the car who's probably tired of being in the car. Look at the face yeah. voice is making right now. I can see the gears turning. <laughs> He's like... But how? <laughs> I don't. See, Emily has it coming right out of her back of her machine. Hmm. Oh, is she using a six inch? Yeah, that's why. Well, she that's why. Producer. Yeah, you have an eight inch fan. I'm the asshole. The, the way the way you have it is fine, dude. So just now, make sure that you know which way the airflow is flowing. So make sure the fan is pointing the right way, and then connect the laser to the suction end and the window to the blow end, and you're you're done. That's it. Just more duct tape. Just duct tape the shit out of it. Okay. If it's, if, it's, if it's really hot in there, you could definitely put it in your window and blow some air at you for like 10 <laughs> seconds. Make you feel better. Yeah, I, I don't know about the Terrible models, but the AC Infinity models that we recommend on the buying guide have like an arrow, which is super handy. Oh, yeah. Like they actually, it, it they actually an have an arrow. Oh, okay. The well, then good. You're good to go. I don't. I only have the one piece of six inch duct the exhaust. So cut it in half. You can slice it, expand it, and then yeah, wrap you just it need good you, with duct tape. You just need some cut. scissors and then a pair of wire snippers, and you can just snip the wires and just now you got two oh. pieces, paper towels. Right. Well, um, uh, while well, he's doing that, I'll uh, well. You were going to talk. Go ahead. Uh, well, I just, sorry. I just want to make sure I answer this question from Boba, uh, who asked uh, a manufacturer sending you the machine. So Boba wants to know what our process is when we get sent a machine for review. Uh, typically, yeah, it's a great question. So typically, first of all, I don't, I don't pay for machines almost ever. Uh, it's, it's pretty rare. Have we paid for a machine, Kyle, ever? I mean, we the first uh, few Nacrons I paid for, and then that was it. I think after yeah, that. Yeah, I paid then, for my CO2. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's you true. You paid for your ohm tech. My ohm tech, my 30 watt Maxtron, and the CO2 uh, coherent uh, CO2 Galvo. I paid for. Outside of that, we've received the machines for free, uh, and we're we've been in like this weird situation lately because we've we've had verbal conversations with manufacturers about what our expectations are uh, when they send the machine, and that hasn't really been holding up. So we need to write up like. And Kyle and I have been talking about this behind the scenes, like kind of like an ethics statement, basically, that that just says, like, here are the expectations and this is what you'll get for sending the machine. And this is what you're not going to get for for sending the machine. Uh, we've never taken a dime for a review ever. And we try to work with companies that have affiliate programs because that helps support the channel and uh, write Kyle's paycheck, et cetera, et cetera. But outside of like on. affiliate stuff, yeah, I, you know, there's, um, there's not uh, a lot going on, you know, typically, typically it's just like, Hey, here's the thing I'm going to, and again, this is like something that wasn't very clear with three P lasers when they sent the EM smart, but we're going to tear the machine down and we're going to look at every part of it. Like everything is on the table. Uh, they, a lot of, uh, manufacturers will ask for a chance to, edit or review the footage before it gets posted uh we never agree to that ever so that's never part of our agreement uh none of the manufacturers that have ever gotten a laser uh or, or had a laser sent to us have ever been able to review their review before it's been published um which is really important to me that we to do that uh and i mentioned we don't we don't take payment for reviews so i don't get paid per episode or anything from any of these manufacturers per review uh, so it's just the affiliate income and then the ad revenue from watching the videos, which I think is totally, uh, totally fair. And we, uh, we we try to be as objective as humanly possible when it's applicable. We try to compare them to other machines. Um, I'll, uh, Boba, I'll add some Boba's, Ooh, Go ahead. Yeah, uh, sorry. I'm just still reading the comments here. Boba says, I have a manufacturer that wants to send you a machine. The company is Morita Laser. I, have you ever heard of them? Uh, I think I've heard the name come up. Well, uh, 
I'm going to look into it. Yeah, we, I, uh, I, I think I've heard of them. We're a little selective. Um, so, you know, it depends on the company. I'd love to do some some research. Uh, I We definitely have kind of standards that we, we expect companies to hit, including sales, before we start taking things. And we can talk more about this after stream, Kyle. We don't have to harp on it for too long. Yeah. But the, the first thing that I would have them do, Boba, is uh, shoot me an email. Contact at lasereverything.net is where we handle kind of our collaboration stuff. So that would be yeah. that would be the way to go on that. I'm I'm kind of itching for a voice update. Up oh, there he is. What's up, voice? We've cut stuff. Okay. Okay, we've cut things. So now we have two pieces of hose. You know what? Let me uh kind of give you guys a little better angle, I guess, of what I'm doing here. So we got the two layers here. Got my stool. Okay, so I I probably should have been a little more clear. Yeah. But like, I would put the fan like literally at the window sticking out of the window i mean if you can like if you had like a little that. shelf or something or can you can you dr screw it to the wall no not yet we were buying an air conditioner we're gonna buy an air conditioner we're gonna put a piece of wood in here to make it permanent and then we'll be able to do it then but for now I'll, I'll show you how i have mine set up too that might help visualize how that'll work uh well you can always change it later boys yeah i got it we're um to, to kind of piggyback on to what alex was saying about reviews and uh and machines and companies wanting to send us stuff to uh there, there's no shortage in in how we explain that um regardless of of what they send or what they want we're very clear in that whatever we feel about the machine is going to get shared so if we're happy with it we're happy to say we're happy with it if we're not happy with it we're not going to say we're happy with it we're going to say why we're not happy with it and you know and, we, oh, go ahead i was going to say a lot of the time manufacturers are understanding they ask for feedback and and we're happy to give it to them but and we're happy to give them feedback while we're working through building a review yep and it's nice to hear when they're open to it, but we can't rely on the fact that they're going to change anything because for all we know, they could be just trying to sue us into giving a better review, right? So we have to take everything at face value for what it is. And at yeah, the end of the day, we have to be able to share our thoughts with you guys that that is how it is. Yeah. And we we haven't really dished out like a brutal review yet. Um, I think the... I think the lowest score that we've given so far is a 7.2, and that was for the EM Smart, so I just published that episode. When we find a laser, and we will, that is a 3 out of 10, it will get a 3 out of 10. Uh, I'm kind of itching for it. I kind of want to do a like a nuclear strike, and I just haven't had a good excuse to do one yet. I'm a little excited. I, I can give you a sneak preview of the one that my CO2 is going to get. Yeah, I bet. It's brutal. Is it going to be less than 5? Yes. Wow, dude, savage. Less than five? Yes. Uh, and 99% of the reason why is the customer service and reliability and mm. <laughs> value. And you said this, is, a, this is like a name brand laser, right? Not like a no-name white label laser? It is sold to me by a rather large CNC and laser company. Sure from ebay um Yikes. it was it was imported from china like you know most things in this industry um it was sold to me through ebay and it was stored in a warehouse here and shipped by the company so i didn't have to deal with import tax i didn't have to deal with import delays i didn't have to deal with you know customs delay when all the boats were backed up at the port um so that well, was a, a massive appeal to me what they can't say is that you didn't make every opportunity to give them a chance to correct the issues because I've, I've reached I've out seen, to them. I've seen how many emails you've sent. Five times. They've gotten back to me three out of the five times. They've ignored me the other two. And the times that I did reach out to them and get a response, the first time was a, a request for assistance because uh, two of the three power supplies died. One seemed to be on its way out in checking the, the power step-up transformer that they sent me it was getting excessively hot i yep. didn't feel safe running it and when i said hey can you just confirm what the part is and so i'll either order it after i know what i need or i'll pay for shipping to get it warrantied out because they weren't going to cover shipping from china yep. um, they're like yep no problem what's your order number? We'll check on your warranty and get it sent out to you. I'm like, I bought it on this date. Here's my order number. I'm messaging you through the contact request form on eBay that I ordered the machine from just for, you know, tracking purposes. 
He goes, okay, we'll get back to you. And after two weeks, I didn't get a reply and I requested an update. And they said, oh, we'll get back to you. After that, no more replies. It's all radio silence. So, so I I was intentionally ghosted. It's a sad story, man. It is what it is. I mean, so here here's, here's what it is, right? I'm okay with if something fails in a machine. When a company sells you a machine with a warranty and it wasn't something you did, I actually had an electrician come and check out my wiring to make sure, you know, I didn't screw something up. Everything is legit, passed with flying colors. I'm okay with something fails. I'm okay if a mistake happens. I'm okay if when it was shipped, if it got banged around in shipping, you know, whatever. Stuff happened. Yeah. Um, I care about how the, they handle you from that point forward. Are they taking care of you? Are they doing the right thing? Are they backing their product? If, um, if anything, it's kind of nice because it is an opportunity to review the customer support. That is funny you mentioned this. I, I actually had somebody ask about this earlier. When I'm looking to give feedback on, on a machine, I'm actually half the time praying for a reason to talk to customer service as a yeah. customer. Yep. Uh, with the Wisely, when the power supply failed, that was an opportunity for their customer service skills to shine or fail. It was the and same with shined. the uh, the Eon uh, with the t- the tube. Remember, the tube yep. came shattered. The tube was in pieces, and I had a new tube in three days. It was a great yep. opportunity to showcase the customer support that we received. It was an identical situation where they said, hey, no problem. I actually messaged them going into a weekend, right? And shippers there don't generally pick up on Sundays and and Saturday evenings. So I kind of missed the boat on that, right? Metaphorically Mm. speaking, it was actually a plane. But the truth of the matter is they were leaving going into their weekend for their their day or two off. They still had a power supply ready to go out Monday morning for me. They said it'll be there Friday. It was their Wednesday said. And I mean, the the pre prior Wednesday, not the after Wednesday. Yeah. (laughs) So uh they definitely under promised and over delivered and i they did the same for you with my co2 it was uh they didn't have a chance to promise anything because what they did promise was uh was not supplied right uh and miranda says kyle is probably the most level-headed person at laser everything so if he's irritated you've definitely messed up (laughs) i i do my best to be you know i take a step back I, I say my goose frabas and rub my earlobes. Um, <laughs> I get upset like everybody, right? But I, I, I try and practice, you know, self calming. And uh, we'll throw we'll throw this up too really quick because I'm always on our way out. If that's if they ask for a review, if they want to dictate what's said in the video, then they have to pay your rates, and it has to be disclosed in the video that it's been sponsored. Uh, and I mean, call me savage, but I would call that an ad, right? Yeah. I mean, that's I just. Mean, they're just paying you for your face at that point to deliver an advertisement. It's not even really a review anymore. I don't know yeah. if I would call that a review personally. Well, she's saying that's if they ask for a review. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I, to- I totally it. get it. So I'm just saying, like, that, you know, semantics. I totally agree. Yeah. A sponsorship yeah. is is still advertising in some way or another, right? We don't even go down that road. I mean, it, no, we've never at least gone not down yet, that road. Whether we do or not in the future is kind of irrelevant. If, but. if I ever did it, I, I'm not going to say that we'll never do some kind of sponsorship at least or everything. It's great to work with brands. Working with brands is an awesome thing. It's good for the channel. Uh, I, I would just make sure that it's good for the viewers too. If it's not something that I'm not personally like absolutely freaking stoked about, there's no chance in hell that it's going to show up on the channel. There's just not. Uh, reviews yeah. is different reviews i'll show you bad lasers all day because i'm going to tell you it's a bad laser but if somebody pays me to be a mouthpiece it's going to be something that i'm excited about even if kyle's kyle's the one delivering it or boyce is the one delivering it it's going to be something i'm excited about something that i want to put in front of people we're not just gonna do sponsorships you know <laughs> you, you know yeah. what i'm saying so we're not but, gonna uh, put our name on something that's you know Nobody's ever asked me to do light somebody's house on fire from sketchy wiring or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's literally not been asked of us. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't foresee that in the future. I I like the review setup we have now. I think we have a really good, um, like kind of template going now, uh, that we kind of workshopped a bit and and we've got that going really smooth with our, our rating system. Uh, and, and companies have been excited. We've been excited. Uh, the viewers have been excited. So, um, you know, I, I, 
feel good about the system we have in place. I don't feel the need to do some kind of like sponsorship thing because the review system works really well. Emily makes a great point here. If a video is ever paid for and it's not disclosed, I get so annoyed when I learn that people had done paid videos and there is no disclosure. That is, yeah. even I've watched, I've stopped watching channels for that reason. I, I unsubscribe, I leave them because that is such a, a disservice to the people that watch them, right? YouTube so forces you to check the sponsorship. But it says this video is sponsored. You have to check the box when you upload the video. Otherwise, you're breaking yeah. YouTube's terms of service. Yeah, there's a box. There's a box to check. It shows up in the little in the corner of the video when you start the video. It says this video contains sponsored whatever. You know, like the, you have to check it. Yeah. Uh, For those that Sam, don't know, I, I I'm sure. Sam says knows, uh, review bad lasers, but just don't show the internals of the laser. I think he's referring to the EM Smart review there. And the the EM Smart. Let me just let me just be perfectly clear about that review i don't feel like the em smart review or i don't feel like the em smart is a bad laser because i i opened the machine i looked inside i know what's in there and i'm i'm being nice to them by not showing people but it's not i'm not hiding anything bad like that's why i'm so confused as to why they asked for it to be removed um yeah. because there's there's nothing to hide i i don't understand it their explanation had something to do with like their suppliers were were upset that that had been posted in that live stream but i don't i don't dislike the em smart i i think the em smart is a, a neat little machine for the right people and i 100 percent stand behind my review and the score that I gave it, uh, yeah. you know, with, uh, with the utmost integrity. Uh, I, I, I genuinely feel like it deserves the score that it got. I, you know, if anything, you know, I could have docked them for being shady, but we don't really have a, a rating review category for that. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's sketchy. But again, according to what I saw, in my subjective opinion, I think it deserved the 7.2 that it got, whether I could show the internals during the review or not. So uh, I, I yeah. stand by it. I stand by it. At the end of the day, too, like if if somebody out there in the community happens to own the same laser, um, they purchased it. They don't have a, uh, a professional courtesy to uphold, right? Out of, relationship, uh, yeah. Out of maintaining professional courtesy. There's no... Uh, reason why they couldn't necessarily take their machine apart and take pictures and post it online, which yeah. people have. Spoilers. The At the end of the day, yeah, you're, you're not really missing much. It's just unfortunate it, it, that we couldn't show it in the video and show it that did it's... Stir, you know, it did stir trouble here at Laser Everything as well, since we're on the topic, uh, and, and me and, and the staff, everybody, because everybody's included in these kind of decisions, um, you know, we, we just kind of came together and agreed that from now on, anything that comes through our doors, there needs to be an agreement, a very specific agreement. We're growing, you know, we, we, we're still kind of figuring this out. We don't have anybody telling us how to do this as we go. Uh, and we, we've never run a YouTube channel this big before. So we're learning. And this was a, the EM Smart was a learning experience for us where we were put in a uncomfortable position. And rather than YOLO and burn a bridge, uh, we complied, uh, essentially. We, we certainly didn't have to. Um, and from there, you know, now there is going to be signed agreements going forward that cover the expectations of, of reviews. And that's yep. uh, that's a that was a learning opportunity for us that, that we had to take advantage of. Uh, we've learned and we're, I think we're, we're in a better position now to review things going forward on, on our terms. It actually led to uh, the, the UV that came from Ocean Laser. Pascal, I know I know we have a lot of people in the, in the crowd uh, that love them, but there was a very specific agreement. And while they did say they understood, I very specifically said in no uncertain terms that uh, yep. everything about this machine is going to be shared. Yep. Whether, it's, very, good, whether very, it's bad, very whether it's clear. otherwise. If there's anything you don't want me to to, to show or know about now or, or share, tell me now so that we can cancel this agreement and not proceed because we're just, we're not going to hide stuff from the viewers. And that's yeah. just the way we are. That's um, just the way we do it. Yeah, that's the way we've always yeah. done it. We're all about being very open and clear. Voice, do you have uh, input? Sorry, I muted you because the... Uh, You've got a lot going on. <laughs> you got to find your paper towel. How, how much noise am I making in the background here? 
Uh, substantial, and yeah. uh, you also sound like you're about 50 miles away from your microphone. Oh, you mean this microphone? Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't know how we can do much more existing is pretty loud with all three machines going. It sounded better once you picked the mic up. Oh, it's probably because it's sitting on the mic bed or on the bed here. It's probably I'll say this. vibrations. We got the duct work duct taped <laughs> out the window, going Good. to the machine, of course, down around there. And when I when I turn on the um the air assist, I don't feel additional air coming out of the nozzle for the air assist. I don't I don't feel a higher pressure. So that's my next big question is, how do you know when you got enough air coming out? Yeah. So, I mean, does your California Air Tools compressor have a, like, pressure gauge on it? Yeah. And let me turn that off for a second. That's super loud. You have two ways of doing this, right? You yeah, have you that bypass nozzle on the inside of the machine that you had your hand on before that you pointed out. Mm -hmm. It's got the little thumb screw on it kind yeah. of thing. So you, you can... You have the capability of going high or low there. So you have your output from your compressor, and then you could turn it down from that. And I, I'm not sure if the Aon has a um, like a uh, air assist cut enable to turn that. Do you have ultimate air assist on that? That I don't is know. Is that what that is? Is there a electrical wire going to that block where the thumb screw is? Okay. So no, it's just don't. straight manual. So so I don't think it's uh, going to turn up the pressure when you have cut enabled on or uh, air assist on light burn then, which is fine. So basically whatever you set your pressure to with that thumb screw is whatever it's going to be. If you want to know exactly what the PSI output is, set it on the compressor and then open up the thumb screw a little bit. Alrighty, I'll see if I can give that a try. I'm gonna mute my mic while I do it though. Man, I'm getting jacked up to uh, to want an air compressor to get this set up for me too. I'm doing a, I'm doing a little treat show self tonight. So what you not get for only, dinner? Not only is Miranda getting, um, it's not that fancy, but not only is Miranda getting room service, I'm having them bring me a salmon. Ooh, yeah. it's very I'm healthy of you. I'm nervous, dude. This, this hotel's a little sketchy. It's like it's like a four star hotel and it's super fancy, but we're here on an off night and it was like a hundred bucks. I don't know. I just like I looked around and I, it just it's like fancy, but it's also like three hundred years old. And I'm just kind of nervous about what's going to come out of the kitchen. Like I'm hoping it's not like MRE salmon or something. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Have faith, man. Have faith. <sighs> Salmon's very heart healthy of you. Got those omega threes. So that is my piece of plywood replacing the window frame and on the other side of the ducts on the outside i have what's called a wall end cap so i don't get backflow it stops air from coming back if it's windy or cold out because living in the northeast so i don't have to worry about closing off the window when i'm not using the equipment and back up there you see my eight inch centrifugal fan with uh eight inch to six inch uh adapters and that just goes to my CO2. And then I have a six inch there that goes to my my Galvo table. And that's it. Nothing too fancy. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm looking at here. I loosen that up a little bit here. And I have these two gauges. I should be able to adjust it here as well, right? Yes. So that that's the output I was telling you about where you can step down the amount of pressure coming out of the tank itself. Yes. And that way you can the, you can actually utilize that gauge as knowing exactly what PSI is coming out of the nozzle if you want. Okay. So like anywhere from like 5 to 15 PSI is pretty normal. 5 is good for like engraving. Right. 15 is good for like cutting, 10 to 15. Some so people go higher and have good luck. Some people just pop the tube off because it doesn't hold at higher pressures. It kind of depends on your setup. Definitely don't engrave with 15 PSI because that's just going to be ridiculous and make a mess. What's what's Boyce doing now? He is, uh, I believe, getting the pressure kind of sort of tuned in just to see where he's at. Um, and we discussed how basically on the compressor there, you see the, the two dials or the two, uh, pressure outlets there. He's utilizing the one on the outside there that's attached to the compressor to set the PSI coming out of the compressor so that he knows exactly what he's sending to the head. And then he can open up the thumb screw on the, the bypass valve inside the machine. So does he have, does he have a pressure gauge after the like bypass? I don't think so. That seems needed. Um, so yeah, I got to turn down the 15, but I still don't feel a difference coming out of the nozzle. So I don't know 
that could be from the thumb screw on the bypass valve inside the machine if you didn't unscrew it at all you remember where that's at i don't know if you need that it, sh it should just be it a little be thumb screw unless it's yeah. unless it's super tight then you definitely yeah, want to open that up yeah it needs to be okay. yeah that that's why you're not seeing a huge difference when you do it make sure you do it slow so you don't like blow the line out we're rooting for you man this is an interesting episode it's fun just hanging out though yeah. answering questions chilling yeah the next time we do one of these kind of odd podcast episodes i was thinking we just like drudge the discord what do you mean so there's just like a million questions in the discord that need to be answered oh. so i was thinking yeah. like you know just go live and just answer them straight out of there we could do that could be something could be interesting this is uh this is making me nervous i'm not gonna lie uh, he's got this that didn't do it i'm curious if it's just not the because the motor is still running the other motors running i'm not sure but Emily said she just plugged hers in, so I don't understand that. So that's kind of where I'm at. Mm. Yeah, I've been doing it for two weeks. You got that right. <laughs> this is uh, this is kind of what it looks like when I am prepping to make a video. <laughs> Yeah. Kyle Kyle's been on with me when I've been at this at this point. I I remember uh, the the longest one of these we've been on was uh, probably the timing episode you were working mm. on. Uh, I I think we spent like a couple days just working through it in a call just sitting on discord yeah, yeah we so did i don't know dude the the mopa color thing prepping for the exciting thing that i can't talk about yet um but we were doing some mopa colors that was hours and hours and hours and hours too that should be uh soon ish that should be extremely soon like any day like literally yeah, any day. like maybe tomorrow or next week I'm not joking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So I don't know what to do from here. Um, I might have to go just ask some more questions in forums to make sure I'm not missing a step between the. Mo it's all hooked up. Can you guys hear that thing hissing? Should it be hissing? It is it hissing off? a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's going to continue to push air through the line. That's what I mean. It's probably just going to slowly drain off the tank, right? Yeah. So yeah. is the tank off right now? Yeah. Okay, so you oh, have two no, no, options, no. right? You... No, it's not. Let me turn it off first. Where is it bleeding air from? Is it bleeding air out the nozzle? Hold on one second. You think he could be losing pressure to something other than the main line? Yeah, maybe. That's a good call. I wish I was there. It's very hard to do this over video. Like this, this specific problem is like very much so something that I'd want to like be hands on with. It's also nice to just have an extra set of eyes looking <laughs> things over too on this type of thing. Yeah, if I was at the shop, I could just do it on mine. We have the same exact machine. Yeah, I don't know where it's coming from. Without um, the damn room to get to the underneath the motor. If you stick your if you stick your hand under the nozzle of the laser, do you feel it? Oh no, no, the laser's off. Everything's off. That is that bypass valve open now? No, it it's coming from under the tank. It sounds like so. It might be that little. Uh, oh, the uh, the spring loaded pressure thing. Yeah over pressure thing yeah i think that so. makes me <clears throat> that makes me think that the air is not getting through that's what i mean it's not but here's the, the thing machine. before before i put the nozzle in the back of it before i put it to the machine it's blowing out plenty of air i tested that before i plugged it into the machine so it's coming so down. It's, it's getting stopped somewhere inside the machine right science i wonder right? if that's i wonder if that's something again i haven't done this ever but i wonder if that's something you need to instruct the ruida controller like oh, which air, the, which air assist to use? Yeah, because I mean, you know, oh. you can like assign axis, yeah, you know, right. stuff for like Z and rotary and whatever. Like maybe there's something in the controller about which air well, assist it should be prioritizing. You, you can enable it to to control air assist through Lightburn, right? Because mm -hmm. you have that slider on your cut and layer. You would need a like an electrically controlled valve, um, which is basically what you would see in like if it, if anybody's ever looked up the ultimate air assist well, kit, okay so so here, there's a an electric valve on it when the laser is pre configured with an air assist it's usually not blowing the air unless the job is running voice can you can you run a mock job can I what run a mock job like like run a job but don't like at zero percent power so that you can feel under the nozzle and see if the air situation changes oh well, i can feel right now it's it's blowing air right but is that from the fish tank compressor wait a minute 
now it feels like there's more. Hold on. A I think my theory is that if you run a job with zero percent power and you stick uh-huh. your hand under that nozzle, it's gonna it's gonna blast. Because I okay. think that I think there's a little solenoid or something that doesn't open up until a job is running. Yeah, so what might be happening, this is speculation. I have no idea. I've never seen the inside of an AI machine other than what we saw at the shop when I was up there with you. But it could be that the the primary air pump is the passive engraving uh, air pressure just so it doesn't get stuff all over the mirror. It keeps everything clean. The, the air compressor may just be adding additional on for cut layers. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let me, again, yeah, I would. I would load up. Thing. I would load up a zero percent power job, and then stick your hand under it, man, and just. <laughs> okay, no, hey, you know, zero percent. Make sure it's zero percent. <laughs> Mark's asking, did you switch hoses over? Did you did you switch hoses over, boys? I don't really know what Mark means by that. I'm just assuming um, you would know. No, there is no hose to switch on the mirror nine right now. All you do is it's, it's an external plug, and that's it. They. Yeah, so on the on the newer updated ones that I don't know when they made the change, but uh, there's an actual air inlet for air compressors on the back of the newer setups. So there, he shouldn't have to switch it over. I guess I'm I'm feeling pretty certain I'm right. I'm in agreement. I think we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Okay, I have faith. Um, when you set up your Lightburn uh, test file. Yeah. Make sure it's line, and then on the um, on the cut and layer, you'll see on the right hand side, it'll give you an option for air assist on or off, like a little slider. Make and make sure, sure that you set it to zero percent power. Uh, what you guys are about to watch is being performed by a professional. Please do not attempt this test at home. You could injure yourself severely. You could get third degree burns. You could reflect a laser into your eyeball or uh just a myriad of other terrible awful things so uh again being performed by a professional please do not attempt this okay so here we are line okay kyle mark wants you to check a link that he sent so uh where did he send it uh if you send it to live chat mark it's not going to come through because those are auto filtered but you could tag kyle in a discord post yeah um if you go to uh random do you chat, hear it? tag me no, here, here's got, the deal, guys. I can't open the door and run the job. Okay. We'll talk about how to fix that later. But for now, do you see the air switch? Air? Oh, on the thing. Let me go to it. Yep. Yeah, you got to make sure you turn air on for that. Where is that at? I don't see an air switch. In your cuts and layers panel. Oh, there we go. Yep. Bam. And then uh, it, the door is operated by a magnetic interlock switch. It's in the back right corner of the door. Don't do this at home, kids. Uh, so you'll need to put a piece of metal there so that it detects something trying there. Trying to get me killed, brother. No. <laughs> hey, dude, I'm just teaching you the tricks. It's up to you to use them or don't. Just confirming we're at 0% power here. Yep. Okay. Confirm it on your Ruida controller, too, before you hit the start button. Uh, let me see something here. This is uh, the most irresponsible episode of the Laser Source podcast we've done in a oh, long let time. Let me send it because the door's open. Okay, you got to put a piece of metal over the interlock switch, man. Hold on a second. Nope, over to your right. Also, you're muted. It's behind the the gas piston for the door. Oh, it's back in there. Two little. Nope, nope. Down on the bottom. Main, main. I'm trying to see. Hold on. Let me see if I can solo this real quick. Let me get a little better angle. So it's here's the hinge. Yep, it's not that. It's the body of the machine, like the actual white body of the machine. There's two little metal circles right next to each other. Oh, yep, right there. Yep, that needs you need to cover a piece of metal with that needs to be covered with metal, gotcha. like a thin a thin plate or something. Oh, it's it's a limit switch. It's just a limit switch. Okay, let's see. They'll let me send the job over now. That'll let me know if it's clear. So we're talking right here, right? Yep, that's it. It's gotta be like oh, right cool. up on it. It won't, it won't pull on anything. It's just gotta kind of sit there, like up on it. Mine's taped. Yeah, yeah Alex t- basically took a. There's like a tag or identifier necklace or whatever, and uh, Ah, uh, oh, I drill taped it in. Well, I don't know. Give a a butter knife might work better. Okay. Pocket knife. All right. Uh, Mark, I did see it. Uh, The machine has seen upgrades since then. His is a three-way valve, I believe, and from the back of the machine 
going to the front, there is a, a check valve with a three-way on it. And then from the air pump comes in from the, the second way. And then the last way goes out to the laser head. It's weird. I mean, it, it could, it more it could or less just bypass like, all of that, right? With like just a little... Yeah, just press in the little collar and pop out the, the line. He could switch it over manually like that. Yeah, absolutely. Just the way it's set up, it uh, it looks like it's basically ultimate air assist, but already set up kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So in theory, uh, the when Lightburn has the air assist thing checkmarked, it should engage the solenoid on that three-way and let the compressor air go through at a higher PSI, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yes, that that is a, a good resourceful idea. Thank you for sending it over, Mark. Uh, just a quick hey to all of the 19 people who are interested in watching this. Hanging out with the fam. Hanging out. Mark's saying, huh, then Alex is probably right. Job needs to be instituted. I, I think that's it, yeah. man. One way you could actually... Oh, well, I, I mean, there's lots of ways you could do this, but... Uh, boys, if you can hear me, um, yeah. if you... If you add a second line on a different layer color, zero power as well, you could set one to um, air assist on and one to air assist off. That way you might be able to feel the difference. And if you overlap them, then you should be able to feel them from the same spot. So that way one pass should feel like it's, you know, giving your hand the the north wind or whatever. Not a a bad idea. You can do... uh, Control D to duplicate there. Oh, you did the copy. Yeah, Got I uh, want to give a different, different. Just tap. Uh, yep. Yeah. And then uh, there you go. Ah oh, shit. You know what I didn't know until a few weeks ago. I don't know which one of you showed me, but underneath the cuts and layers in line, you can actually change. I think it was you, Kyle. You can actually change the values in that little area underneath the cuts and layers window for the selected one without double clicking the layer open. Dude, yep. I never, I never knew that. That was a, that was a mind blower for me, for sure. Um, in, I don't know if it's. Ooh, sorry. Go ahead, boys. What's up? I'm just saying, one's on, one's off. Okay. Good. There you go. If you highlight them both and then hit uh, P on your keyboard, it'll center them both, so it'll be a little closer to you. But I still can't get that damn thing to trip out with that butter knife, so I got it right in there too. We got it right up against it, sticking mm-hmm. pretty good. So I'm trying to send. Do you have out. a? Do you have a door on the front of yours? Well, like a well, that shouldn't do it because what if you were like inserting a piece longer than the bed? Right? Yeah, I can't imagine it'd be a a limit switch down there. Let me see it again, boys. Take me over there again. We've got this little plate right there. Yeah, I swear that's it. That wire there is the wire for the light burn camera. This, yeah, it runs all the way up to the camera. Do you have, are there, does your unit have limit switches on both sides? Do you have one on the other side as well? Like the no. corner? Nothing's over here. Bizarre. So just, um, just this one right here. To, to get around the safety, uh, open up your front door and then you can close the top and you can just hold your hand in through the front door. Bingo. Okay. You can you can disable individual limit switches in your light burn machine settings as well. Not that we should take the time to do that right now, but that can be just disabled via software. Oh yeah, I just can drop so- the bed down too to gain plenty of clearance. Duh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Many minds. We're a hive mind. <laughs> yes, we'll figure it out. I've Keep been meaning to do mine via software because uh, it drives me nuts, but. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's send this bad boy over now. I need to turn mine off too. See, wait, wait, it's still not transferring. What does it say, man? It's just saying file transfer. Hold on. File transfer failed. There's a problem. USB cable? You mean this bit machine? Oh, let's try that, damn it. It It does say disconnected, bro. Oh. See under laser, your laser heading there for the laser window? It says disconnected. So your laptop isn't talking to the machine. You didn't plug the USB, USB cable. USB cable. Oh. Okay. Oh god. Okay. That's why we're here. Teamwork. Teamwork. Tech support, motherfuckers. Okay. Uh, well, you get that set up. Jonas, two K I asks, what brand of fiber laser would you recommend for engraving firearms and stippling grips? Uh, I'm always going to recommend. Okay, go ahead and 
mute voice there for a second. I'm always going to recommend the um, the Mactron units, and uh, probably a, a Mopa would be best because uh, getting that 60 watt M7 is going to afford you much finer control over the amount of power you're applying to the material. Not so much necessary for firearms, though it will help you engrave things a little faster than usual because you can raise your pulse duration and get a little more power out at higher frequencies. Uh, and, of course, you sound new, so you that may not mean anything to you, but it's a good thing. Uh, and then additionally, when doing things like stippling, especially non-Glock polymers, uh, having that extremely high frequency range and being able to work with lower pulse durations so that we're applying very little energy to those different polymers is going to come in really, really handy. Uh, if you can't afford a 60 watt, you know, M7 uh, MOPA unit, check out some of the JPT LP models, which still afford you a very, very wide frequency range. Uh, but not the pulse duration control. Those could also be a great option and will certainly help out. Uh, and, and they can be a couple thousand dollars cheaper than the MOPAs. Uh, and they'd still be better than something like a Rakus or a Max, where you're going to have a very limited frequency range to work with. Again, mostly a concern with the polymer grips. Uh, so, so that's kind of what this decision comes down to. Any of these machines with just about any of these sources will do well on metal firearm parts in general. Um, but if, if you really want that plastics performance uh, and then that fine control, you're going to want to take a look at either the 60 watt M7 or maybe the 50 watt LP or 30 watt LP. And my manufacturer of choice is Mactron. I, I really do like their lasers. I still think they have some of the best support around. Um, that's an import choice. Uh, if you don't want to import and you just want to buy something off Amazon, SFX is the way to go. They're uh, a good chunk more expensive, but they just show up at your door. No hassle on shipping, no hassle on duties or customs or anything like that. So, um, yep. you know, you can check out SFX too. Um, but yeah, both, both great companies, both make amazing lasers. Uh, Kyle just reviewed a wisely um that he's been pretty happy with so wisely laser another great option for you uh, there's certainly okay. certainly no no shortage of machines to uh to choose from you can always check out the buying guide too over at lasereverything.net slash buying guide we have some great options over there for you to take a peek at we need to get amanda to drop the wisely up in there oh by the way um the wisely also has a 20 percent off coupon till the end of the month nice. can we get that on so, the plan, actually just before i forget about it I'll like do it now. so i don't have anything um, to write on or i would do it myself but i got it the uh you. yeah the the wisely has a 20 percent off coupon so pr price it out a couple places see if, yep. but the the key is is there is such a thing as too cheap because too cheap means you're getting so close to the the cost of hardware that mm -hmm. there there has to be corners cut. It's either yeah. you know potentially faulty parts or hours and hours and hours skipped of uh, you know wiring and safety stuff. Um, so don't sacrifice quality to to save a hundred bucks. Is what I'm trying yeah. to tell you. Yeah. Uh, Boyce messaged me. He says he thinks he's ready to uh, run his little experiment. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute him now. Okay. Boyce, did the uh, the door switch trick work after plugging your laser in? Joe uh, said, awesome. Thanks for the info. I definitely look into all the options. I do have a budget of about 6 to 10K. So you're yep. right in the ballpark for, for a solid 60 watt Mopa unit if that's what you're looking for. And any, you can any get a good variety of lenses. Yeah, any of those yeah. three companies is going to have a, a unit that will do what you want it to do in that price range. So uh, if you just keep those keep those notes in mind, reach out to the three of us who you like best. You may get along with one of them better than the others. Uh, we, we like them all, and we, we recommend them all highly. Take a look into different, you know, a variety of lenses, too. Like a 110 is a good all-rounder, or even a 125 or 140 or 150 or whatever. Yeah. But um, the smaller the lens, the more detail and uh, the more uh, oomph impact. you're going to get on metal. Yeah. Yep, Impact is a better describing word than I was thinking. And uh, if you go with a bigger lens, you, you'll you find it's a little more forgiving on plastics and polymers um, because it doesn't just blow right through them because of the power density of the dot being so small. Variety. Variety. Um, it helps to have some options on lenses. How we look at most of them will send you multiple. Oh, you're muted. Oh, there you go. 
Nope. <laughs> Where's your mic, dude? Oh, rough, dude. We could. Yeah. Is it? Are you experiencing this too, Kyle? Yeah, it's all right. If you want to type it in private chat, we can relay it. So I think uh, I think Boyce needs a USB hub. <laughs> That's what this is sounding like. All right. So Boyce says uh, I took off the access door and we're good to go. Dope. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hopefully this solves the problem for you, dude. We'll, uh, we'll cut it short after this little experiment here. Or not short, long, I guess. It's been an hour 30. Time flew today. Yeah. It's cool just hanging out. Yeah. Let's take a look at it, boys. Let's see it. Just triple check that those powers are set to zero on the Ruida panel before before you we run the job. We don't want to give you a line brand across your palm, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to witness a third degree burn today. Okay. He says we're a hundred percent guaranteed to be at zero. If you move them closer to the, the bottom of your, uh, your work area and resend it, it'll be closer to the front of the bed and you won't have to reach in as far too. True. It looks pretty far in there. I don't want you to, it does. You know. he's going to be like down there, like, <laughs> like trying to, I mean, it's de deceptively. It's a big bed. So, Can I you mean, it? you got to get know. in there. He might have just like crazy long arms. Do you see him with his towel too? Periodically, he's just got his Mister Clean vibes going, yeah. like super he was hard. Saying that's the that's the one room in the house that has zero ventilation. His nice. windows closed. Yeah, I do. We got the we got the wink of uh, satisfaction. I kind of I kind of like mime voice. <laughs> he's entertaining. He's just like eh, eh, eh. feels like game night. It does. Like we're doing just a little charades. Yeah. La laser charades with the guys all right we're ready boys make it happen man oh did he do it he did it he did the test and it worked yeah oh hey charades um that's awesome so so yeah so you so it's only going to output that extra air when the job is running and you've selected air and light burn if you don't turn the air on in light burn you're not going to get that added air from your compressor yep so that's that's going to be a setting you're going to want to pay attention to now that you have that bonus air assist on. Yeah. Um, so on your engrave layers, like if you're doing acrylic or if you're doing wood or whatever, you yep. don't want to have air assist on because what it's going to do is it's going to either one of two things. It's going to stop the ablation from um, giving a char, which is what you want on wood when you're engraving usually. Um or it's going to accidentally cut through it. Uh, or two, uh, if you're doing something like acrylic or a plastic, you're going to just throw melted plastic all over the thing you're engraving, and you're yeah. going to have molten plastic melting back onto the part you engraved, yep. um, which is also no good. Try and uh, make sure you remember to turn it off for engraves and use it only for line cuts. Boyce says, good luck editing this shit show for audio. <laughs> It'll be fine, man. That's my job. That's what I'm good at. So, uh, yeah, I think we did it. Yay. The exhaust is set up. The air assist is running. So Boyce is ready to start running jobs, um, which means we might be seeing some Mirror 9 content on TikTok. If you guys don't follow us on TikTok, go check it out. I'm sure Boyce wants me to shout it out right now. Uh, it's Boyce over at... Some cool stuff. It's at tiktok.com slash at, because they do it weird, slash at laser everything official. That's the at symbol. Tiktok.com slash at laser everything. And, uh, oh, yep, little little test grid there. Nice. Um, and you guys can check out Boyce. Boyce has been going live, I think. Uh, yes, head nod. Yes, you've been going live on TikTok. No, not yet. Not yet. Soon, Soon TM. I gotta pull the private chat up yet. Not yet. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, it's, dude, it's like well, literally like your mic is, is is sewn into the carpet. That's what it sounds like. I, I can hear you, but I don't think anybody else can. Um so boy said still have the air leak after it turned off. Uh we'll have to look at that tomorrow. So there's a, a bleeder valve for overpressure on the bottom of the tank that can also be used for bleeding the tank. It'll help Usually, get like, the moisture out of the bottom of the tank if because like, when you compress air, it condenses water. Usually so, there's like a little pin, and if you pull it, it'll go and like let all of the it'll release all the pressure. But if you don't do that, it's just gonna bleed out until it evens out. The tank's still gonna be full, and you shouldn't leave the tank full because the water will collect at the bottom and it will corrode your air, your compressed air tank, 
from the inside. So when you're done using a compressor like that every day, you want to make sure that you pull the pin so it opens the valve and you release all of the water. There's going to be water. Just get a little tray or something. So you release all of the water and excess air. You want to end every day with that compressor empty. That's how I learned how to use them. Uh, 100% agree. Uh, if you find that it's leaking excessively, like it, I can hear it and it doesn't sound like it's over pressure. Um, try pulling it and letting it go quickly a couple of times. It could just be there's like um, inside the valve, there's like stuff going on. Uh, sometimes it gets jammed up. Pulling it and letting it go a couple of times will uh, usually help. Yeah, and, uh, and Mark here leaking, with, with like 80,000 asterisks says, you're going to want that moisture separator, boys. So if you don't already have a moisture separator, definitely pick one up. They're super inexpensive. Do you already have a moisture separator in this setup? Oh, he's showing us, so I'm going to see if I see yes. Okay, great, good. He's got it. I didn't even see it there. Right. So that looks good. Gucci. Yeah, Gucci. Um, there will still be moisture in the tank, though, so make sure that you're emptying it. Not that you don't... I'm. This is more for the viewer's benefit. I'm not doubting your compressor knowledge. I don't know what you know and what you don't. You know, you, the capital Y, uh, Royal U. Is that what we is that what we got today? I got a kind of a half nod from Boyce and I got an uh from Kyle. So I think that's gonna be it. I think that's a wrap yeah. for tonight. Uh if you guys liked this style of podcast, uh if you're listening to the audio version, especially listening to us just kind of like randomly work through this, uh let us know. Give us some feedback on this one way or the other. Uh, we'd, we'd really like to hear from you what you thought about this. Again, today's episode was an experiment. Uh, we, we don't know how this is going to sound in audio. I, I've still got to edit it. We're going to trim this up big time, you know, with, with the edit. So let us know. Let us know what you thought about it. Uh, live, guys, I appreciate you being live. Hold off your feedback until you you listen to the edit because uh, I, I may be able to craft something up with this. I'm kind of excited to see how it can be chopped up. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode and you're watching online don't forget to smash the like button say smash the like button smash like button yeah smash that like button let everybody else know the content was good and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell what kind of sound does a bell make he's just look he's just <laughs> look he's like he's like two seconds from sleep don't forget to uh subscribe guys and uh hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time we upload an episode if you're listening to this specifically on apple podcasts Please rate and review the show. Uh, it makes a, a huge difference for us uh, as far as discoverability goes. And we want to bring this content to as many people as possible. So um, that really, really helps us out. And uh, if you want to support the show, make sure we can keep doing what we do. Don't forget to sign up over at masters.lasereverything.net for the LMA bonus episodes. We've got uh, bonus live streams like this one. We've got uh, laser parameters and a great community over there and a whole bunch more. Uh, we got some fun stuff coming up. So go check that out again over at masters.lasereverything.net. Kyle, thanks for being here, buddy. Uh, Absolutely. Thanks for voice, uh, hanging out. Mime voice. Give me a just uh, thank you. And um, <laughs> Uh, I think I think oh hey uh, right here right at the very tail end Mark swinging in with the five dollar super sticker thank you so much Mark I wish I could see Thanks, the sticker Mark. I'm not I'm not actually I only have one of my monitors set up right now so I'm I'm not in the YouTube live control room so I can't even see what the sticker looks like but I'm sure it's cute it's, it's cute yeah it's, it's cute. like a look okay. at this thing nice excellent uh, and Mark Cooper uh, says. Uh, this was a great, I'm assuming, episode. This was a great episode. Thanks, Mark. Um, Mark to Mark, back to back. Uh, you guys rock. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate you. One more Laser Source episode until I am back in New York and back to the regular studio setup. So things have been weird. Uh, I promise we will, uh, we will be back to normal soon. Um, and that's all I've got. So unless you guys have anything, you guys got anything? You uh, you covered everything thoroughly, and uh, we love you guys. Sweet. See you in the next one. We're good to go. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.